By watching the advertisement at the beginning of this video, you can help me to continue to help you with these free informative videos. Thank you. This video is about pie charts. Pie charts are oddballs among the charts. Let me explain why. All these four types are based on this simple little table. The table has two series of values as they call that. So here in column and line chart we find those two series of values, 1, 2, 1, 2, etc. They are basically the same because they treat the horizontal axis as a category axis. 1, 2, 6 and 7, 1, 2, 6 and 7 are categories. The XY chart or graph or scatter graph is very different from a line chart. It may look the same but that's very deceiving because it has real numeric values on this axis. So it says I don't see 4 here as a category so I will insert 4 here because this is a value axis. In other words there was nothing going on between these observation points. And then there is the pie chart. Very different from all these. Why? First of all, it shows the contribution of elements to the total, but that is not so different from the others. But it has only one series of values to show, either this one or that one, but it cannot show both. So that is quite a limitation, but they are very powerful in another way. So let's see how we can make them. In this case I compare the composition of the inspired air with the expired air. The left one has the inspired, the right one the expired. It cannot show them both at the same time. So when you click anywhere inside here it will automatically select the entire table and it, it will give you either one or two. Let me show you. Insert chart, pie chart, and I'm doing the 3D pie. First of all we are going to make it like that one. So expired air. How can you change it? You can do it in two different ways. You can either go to the select data and then turn the inspired one off. That's the only one it can show and it will do that one. So how can we turn the thing around? Right click here again, 3D rotation and you just rotate it by clicking either on X or Y rotation and then you need to know another trick. I, I would like the pieces separate from each other. So when I click on one of these pieces I actually select all pieces. So when I move one of them out, I move all of them out. Click and hold and drag them out. If you want one in particular sticking out more, let's say this one, then you just click again on that one. You had already clicked once, so you had selected all. Now I select only that one and I pull that one out. So another way of doing this and getting only that part is you can see this is selected and that is selected. So you can have done that from the beginning. You select this one, hold the control key and that one and you will automatically insert a pie chart for that section and then you have to rotate it etc. And you may want labels with it so um, you can always go to that section data labels and I am doing data call out. I want you to know one more thing perhaps. If you like donut charts, this is the donut version of that one. The advantage of donuts is you can make concentric circles, so it can show two series of values, three series of values, but they get very hard to read. So I usually stick with the pie chart, but then I have a limitation that I can only one show one series of values. In order to tackle that problem, I solve that in the following way. 
If I want to show only the Africa results here, then I select from a list Africa. If I want the Asian results, I click on Asia and I get these. So how did we get that done? This box is a validation list. So we do data, data validation, and make sure that you choose a list. And what is the source behind that list? In this case, A2 through A6. So now I have to choose one of those five continents. And then when I change the continent, it will automatically update the chart. How did that happen? That's a formula, of course. That formula is hidden here. I'm copying that label here. And these are formulas based on the function index. Let me show you the first one first. It's the regular index function, the first one of the two. It says in the array A2 through E6, I want to find in this case Asia and then these corresponding values. In which row is Asia? In row 3. 1, 2, 3. Who found that out? The match function. The match function says look up the value A8 and lock that so it doesn't change when I copy it to the right. In the array A2 through A6, lock it. The match type is an exact match, 0, and it found Asia in row 3. Going back to index. And then I want to find in which column do I want to find something in that row 3. Column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5. So I use the column function column A1. When I copy that to the right, it will be column B1, column C1, D1, E1. Okay. So I copy that formula to the right, and it will automatically adjust that. And I hide this, so I can use the limitation of the pie chart to take advantage of its nice looks. And each time I change something there, it will automatically adjust. These are just a few tricks that you would like to know about charts. I have much more on charts in part 3 of my book, of my CD-ROM. And if you want to know how to program a lot of this kind of things, you need this CD. You can find them at genesispc.com.